This symbol indicates the potential for serious bodily injury or death, or in some cases, serious property damage. When you see this symbol throughout the video, you should pay close attention to the factors and instructions that will help you eliminate these potential hazards. Correct selection, assembly, and installation of universal joints and slip spline member assemblies on Spicer Life Series drive shafts are essential to ensure the proper operation and safe use of these and related components. Inadequate attention to these procedures can result in drive shaft runout, vibration, and premature wear, leading to serious bodily injury or property damage. Always follow the specific instructions and recommendations of the component manufacturer. Spicer Life Series 170 drive shafts are designed for Class 7 and 8 heavy duty trucks. Although they require lower lifetime maintenance than other drive shafts in the marketplace, knowing the proper maintenance techniques will save you time and money during service intervals. This video will provide the information needed to service Spicer Life Series 170 drive shafts to extend drive shaft life and get your customers back on the road. When servicing a drive shaft, it may be necessary to use an overhead crane and straps to lift the drive shaft and to position it for service. Spicer Life Series 170 drive shafts can weigh in excess of 100 pounds, so don't try to lift the drive shaft on your own. It is best to have another person assist you with these maintenance procedures by holding the opposite end of the drive shaft from which you are working. Once the shaft is securely in place on the overhead crane, Select a six-point impact style or heavy-duty socket to remove the spring tab bolts from the universal joint. A standard light socket will not provide enough muscle to remove these high-grade material bolts. The light socket may cause the bolts to round off on the universal joint or the bolts may break the socket itself. Position the wrench and remove the spring tab bolts from both sides of the universal joint attached to the yoke ears. Be sure to throw the used bolts away since they cannot be reused once they are removed from the universal joint. Reuse of the spring tab bolts may result in drive shaft failure. Next, position the yoke on top of a bearing receiver cup and place both on at least a three ton press. The bearing receiver cup should be large enough to clear the outside of the bearing cup on the universal joint. If the ram on the press is larger than the bearing cup, a smaller diameter push rod is needed to help push the bearing cup through the yoke ears and to avoid damaging the yoke or bearing. It is critical that the drive shaft is level before removing the bearing cups. If the drive shaft is cocked, the bearing cup will not press out straight and may damage the yoke ear. Using the press, press down on the bearing cup assembly until the shoulder of the journal cross makes contact with the inside of the yoke ear. The bearing cups are a press fit, so it may require some travel of the press ram before the bearing cup is pressed out. But take care not to overpress the bearing cup and journal cross or you risk damaging the inside of the yoke ear. It might appear as if the bearing cup should twist off the trunnion easily once it is pressed out, but this is not necessarily the case. The seal guard on the bearing cup will continue to hold it in place. To remove the bearing cup, Take a pair of vice grips or a large pair of pliers and pull the bearing cup from the yoke ear and trunnion. Now turn the drive shaft over with the assistance of a coworker. Position the yoke with the remaining bearing cup face down on the bearing spacer cup and place both on the press. Once again, it's critical that the drive shaft is level to perform this procedure properly. It's also important that the bearing receiver cup bearing cup and the push rod are all lined up properly on the press. If necessary, use a soft hammer to lightly tap the components in place. If the components are not lined up properly, when pressed, the universal joint will dig into the side of the bearing cup, making its removal difficult. Heavy force may not be needed to press out the second bearing cup, so carefully press on the end of the journal cross trunnion until the shoulder of the journal cross makes contact with the inside of the yoke ear. Once the second bearing cup is pressed out, use your pliers to remove it from the trunnion. At this point, the universal joint can be easily removed from the yoke. After removing the universal joint, take a moment to inspect the yoke for damage. If the yoke is damaged in any way, it should be immediately replaced. If the yoke is free from damage, it's okay to proceed. 
do not apply any grease, oil, or sprays such as never sees on the yoke ears since grease and oil tend to promote rotation of the bearing cups. Select a new Spicer Universal Joint Kit package for the Spicer Life Series drive shaft you're servicing. This shaft is a Spicer Life Series 170. The package will include a new journal cross, four bearing cups, installation hardware, and other assorted hardware. The installation tools included with the kit allow you to approximate the height needed to assemble the universal joint into the yoke. New bearing cups are shipped with these red needle retaining plugs. The plugs are designed to keep the needles from falling down during shipping and they must be removed before beginning assembly of the new universal joint. The service manual for the Spicer Life Series 170 drive shaft recommends greasing the bearing cup assemblies before installation of the universal joint. However, this step can also be completed after installation. The grease that is used during the pre-purging operation demonstrated in this video will work its way into these assemblies, making greasing after installation the preferred method. On the new journal cross, note that there is a zerk fitting in the center of the cross. Position the journal cross into the yoke cross holes with the zerk fitting facing inward toward the tubing. The zerk fitting should be perpendicular to the yoke cross holes. The position of the zerk fitting is critical since you will need to access the fitting during pre-purging of the universal joint. Install the cross end so that it hangs loosely in the yoke end. Do not lay the shaft down with the trunnion unprotected or you may damage the new journal cross. Once again, the drive shaft must be level at all times for the installation procedure to be successful. Place the first bearing cup on the bottom of the trunnion hanging loosely from the yoke end. Next, place the first installation tool on the bottom of the bearing cup. Hold the components in place and gently position the assembly on the press. Cover the top yoke ear with a flat metal plate that is approximately a half inch thick. Press the bearing cup into place by pushing the yoke onto the bearing cup assembly until the installation height tool is flush with the cross hole face. Leave the installation height tool in place for now. While pushing the bearing cup into place, guide the drive shaft to keep it level as the bearing cup is forced down into the end yoke. If the components seem to press in easily, the yoke end may be loose and may need to be replaced. If the universal joint is not centered properly, the installation will not be successful. The drive shaft will run out and vibration can occur. After the first bearing cup is pressed in place, position the second bearing cup and installation tool on top of the trunnion at the opposite end of the journal cross. Once again, place a flat metal plate over the bearing cup assembly and press the bearing cup into place. Push until both installation height tools are flush with the cross hole face. Remember that the installation tools are not designed for exact positioning during installation. However, these tools make it close enough for the spring tabs to finish the job. The spring tabs must be within 15 thousandths of an inch of the correct position for the installation to be successful. This generally leaves around 0.214 inches of bearing cup protruding above the yoke. You may tap the spring tabs lightly with a hammer to help put them into the correct position. Use a ratchet with a 6.8 millimeter socket to snug all the spring tab bolts in place. Then, torque the bolts using a torque wrench. The proper torque specs are listed on the back of the installation kit box. The specs are provided in foot-pounds as well as in the metric equivalent. For our Spicer Life Series 170 drive shaft, the spring tab bolts should be torqued to 25 to 30 foot-pounds. After the spring tab bolts are torqued in place, check the universal joint for stiffness. Universal joint movement in the yoke gear should feel stiff but smooth. The plastic wear washers in the bearing cups tend to increase stiffness, but they will break in over time. Tap lightly with a hammer on the bearing cups after installation to snap the bearing cups flat and place the two remaining bearing cups on the two remaining trunnions. The next step in the installation process is to pre-purge the universal joint with grease. 
Spicer recommends that universal joints are pre-purged before installing the drive shaft on the vehicle. It may be difficult to purge the universal joint once it is on the vehicle and the drive shaft may need to be removed again. Take out a large C-clamp. Place the clamp on the trunnions at the sides of the universal joint opposite the yoke ears. Snug the clamp in place, but do not over tighten it. Place a grease gun on the zerk and apply the grease. Be sure to use a high quality NLGI EP grade 2 lubricating grease for this procedure. The grease should be applied to the zerk until grease comes out of all four bearing cups on the universal joint. Once the grease is visible at all four locations, remove the grease gun and squeeze the C-clamp to force out any excess grease. Wipe off any excess grease on the universal joint and remove the C-clamp. When the universal joint kit is properly installed, it's time to service the slip member boot. The boot's purpose is to prevent lubricant from escaping or dirt from entering into the slip spline members. Before removing the slip member boot from the drive shaft, use a marker to mark all the mating components and a straight edge to line up the marks. This ensures proper reassembly of the drive shaft to its original phasing. Place the first mark just behind the universal joint and before the boot. A second mark should be made on the yoke shaft. Most drive shafts are phased with the yoke ears on the same plane. Occasionally a drive shaft may have special phasing so the drive shaft must be reassembled with the marks lined up. After selecting a flathead screwdriver and hammer, place the screwdriver's head underneath the lift tab on the clamp and tap the handle of the screwdriver lightly with a hammer. The clamp should easily pop off. Repeat this procedure for the second boot clamp. Collapse the boot and place a mark on the spline sleeve and at the end of the weld ring, exactly two and a quarter inches from the yoke shaft to ensure that the slip member will be reassembled to the correct boot position. After making the appropriate marks, the boot and the yoke shaft can be pulled off the end of the drive shaft. Take a moment to inspect the condition of the yoke shaft spline surface for damage. If the splines are damaged or missing, or if any of the blue glide coat is missing, the drive shaft must be replaced. Next, inspect the spline sleeve for damage. Once again, if the splines are damaged, the drive shaft must be replaced. Remember, you cannot service just the yoke shaft or just the spline shaft. Both need to be in good condition and both need to be serviced at the same time. If either is damaged, these components must be replaced in pairs. Also, if the boot has been damaged, water and other contaminants may have leaked into the drive shaft assembly, damaging the splines. If this occurs, the slip spline male and female components must be replaced. After performing a careful inspection of all the components, wipe off any small amounts of rust or dirt that may be trapped in the splines on the yoke shaft and spline shaft. Both the yoke shaft and the spline shaft must be clean, dry, and free of rust, dirt, or solvents. To replace the slip member boot assembly, use a Spicer slip member boot replacement kit. The kit includes the boot, two boot clamps, and a grease packet containing NLGI EP grade 2 grease. There is a measured amount of grease in the packet, and all the grease should be used to thoroughly coat the yoke shaft and spline shaft. Use a paintbrush to apply the grease liberally to the female spline shaft. Make sure each spline tooth is thoroughly coated with grease. However, be sure that the grease does not come in contact with the tube itself. It can make the tube extremely slippery and erase the marks you have in place for phasing. It can also cause the boot to slip once it's clamped. Next, coat the glide coat portion of the yoke shaft with grease, but take care not to get any grease on the outside of the weld ring. Also, too much grease on the glide coat will cause the grease to ride up when the yoke shaft and spline shaft are mated, making the drive shaft slippery and difficult to handle. The new boot should be completely dry for installation. Take the metal boot clamps from the replacement kit and put them on the ends of the new boot. The boot should then be installed on the yoke shaft first. Once the slip member boot is in place on the yoke shaft, insert the yoke shaft into the spline shaft. The phasing marks that you made earlier should line up. 
Position the end of the boot at the two and a quarter inch mark made on the yoke shaft shoulder. Pull the boot clamps up on the boot. At this point, the boot should be fully seated against the yoke shaft shoulder and two and a quarter inches away from the universal joint. Select one of the recommended installation tools from the Spicer Life Series service manual. Apply the force of the clamp tool to the first clamp. When the lock tag on the clamp starts to curl up slightly, relieve the pressure of the tool. Don't apply too much force or you risk breaking the clamp. When performing this procedure with snap-on tool number YA3080, a torque wrench can be used to ensure proper tightening of the boot clamp. Consult the Spicer Life Series service manual for the correct torque specifications. The clamp should be in the groove on the boot and not on the yoke shaft shoulder. If the boot is not clamped properly, water will leak into the boot, causing rust and premature wear. If the lock tag sticks out slightly after installation, just tap it gently in place with a hammer. The lock tag should not be sticking out too high or the clamp can be torn off the boot. Complete the installation by repeating this procedure for the second metal boot clamp. Spicer offers a complete range of drive shaft and universal joint solutions for most heavy duty applications, but proper maintenance is essential for a long service life.